Hola, buenas. ¿Cómo están? Ah, perdón. Una, una aclaración. La presentación va a ser realizada en inglés, ¿sí? Así que si alguno de los presentes necesita, obviamente para la gente que está de manera remota, va a ser simple porque es simplemente cambiar el canal. Pero para la gente que está presencial, si alguno desea, puede acercarse a buscar los traductores. Yo, yo me voy a presentar en español eh, y luego se presenta mi colega y comenzamos la presentación en inglés. ¿Sí? Soy Diego Domínguez, trabajo en Meta hace cinco años como Network Delivery Manager y soy responsable por la ejecución de nuestros planes de capacidad de CDN con PIB y CACHES en la región de Latinoamérica. Hi, I'm, from, I'm Jenny Ramsire. I'm from Boston. I work for Meta. Um, I work on the team that's been doing a lot of the tooling for all of our networking today. So we're going to tell you a little bit about what we've done. All right, thank you. So let's see. Yeah. There we go. So this is what we're going to be talking about. It's just how we handle hearing um, configuration requests from internet service providers that want to have hearing with Meta, how we used to do it, and how we do it uh, since last year. Well, uh, what we were showing before is that uh, our infrastructure for hearing uh, supports all of the services and apps that our company runs. And when we set up hearing with someone, we exchange traffic for every single app that we support. And that used to require a lot of manual work for our team. We receive around 500 emails monthly uh, to our hearing at fb.com account. But about 100 of them were actual hearing requests. We are connected to a large number of internet exchange points that you can see, and we have a very large number of bilateral um, sessions through IXS. So that represented a lot of manual work for us. It was looking at emails, answering them manually, using templates to answer those questions, or notifications about configuration. And it wasn't quite optimal for the scale that we're operating. Uh, this is the timeline history of the amount of emails we were receiving uh, on the x axis of the month. And you cannot see it. That so dip over there is what happened after we changed how we uh, process email requests, uh, hearing requests over email. Uh, what we really wanted to do is make it easier for us to manage the large amount of requests that we were receiving and, and the emails that were coming in. We thought it was not quite the best solution for us. And we wanted to make it easier for everyone at Meta and also for every one of our partners, our internet service providers that want to deal with us. And what did we do? Sorry. So we automated it. We made it so that the handling of the peering at mailbox be done completely automatic. So let's take a look at how we did it. So first off, we had to make a page where peers could come with us, um, without sending us an email. So this is the page on facebook.com slash peers. If you see at the top, um, we've got the facts about meta, we've got our peering policy. And then if you look at the upper right over there, you can see that you don't have to be logged into Facebook to get to the page. So we've heard in the past that using your personal Facebook account to do business with meta, it's not a great experience. We wanted to make sure that you could get to the page without being logged in. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, it's a little blurry, but you can see that there's a button at the bottom that says um, sign in with Hearing Degree. So if you, uh, if you see it, if you click it, you'll be redirected to Hearing Degree. So we were on Facebook.com, now we're on HearingDB.com. And we're using what's called HearingDB OAuth. It's a service where you can sign in with your HearingDB account, and we'll trust the results that we get from HearingDB to say that you are HearingDB. So instead of using a Facebook account, you can now use a HearingDB account. Anyway, if you sign in, 
to be redirected to another page, again, on Series B, where basically you authorize Meta to collect a little information about yourself. This is your name, your email address, so you can communicate with you about your request, and then the list of networks that you're allowed to request your So once we have that, if you click Authorize, You'll be sent back to facebook.com slash period, where you can see the login view with the public period request options. So you click on the request public period button now, you'll see the following widget here. If you look at the top, there's your ASN. If you have multiple ASNs in period B, you'll be able to select one from the list. There's also an email contact. This is defaults to whatever you have in period B, but of course you can change it if there's another address you prefer to use. And then down below you'll see all of the public period sessions that you have with Meta and that you could have with Meta. So if you look at the top here, you can see you've got the IXIDs, you've got the site, um, you've got the traffic, and then you've got the status of the session. So all of these are not configured. Um, if they were configured, you'd be able to see the traffic level and other facts about them. So, let's say you want to request period. What do you do? Well, you can select on the side which exchanges at which you'd like to peer. By default, we'll set up peering everywhere, but if you only want to peer at one location, you just change your checkbox. And after that, you can start, start public peering down in the corner, and then your request will land in our queue. I'll talk about the queue a little later, but... Suffice to say, all you have to do is fill out the form. Here's a close-up view. These, again, are all not configured, but if you had sessions with us, you could also come to this page to see what's the status of my PGP session. Are we exchanging the traffic I expect? That information will all be here as well. All right, so this is for public peering, um, again, where you needed a router. But let's say you want to do private peering, a direct connection with us. Well, <laughs> um, well, we've got a form on facebook.com slash peering for that as well. To qualify, you'll be able to see the request private peering page. It's fairly similar to the public peering. You can see you've still got your ASN, you've still got your email, but instead of seeing all of the IXs where you could peer, you'll see all of the facilities in the dropdown. And you can select the facility from the dropdown, you'll see any existing lags you have with us, and then at the bottom, you'll see an option to add more fast, so you just pick on lags, number of circuits, speed, click the create new lag, and again, that's the end of our queue. It's like the same thing for augment, which, you know, instead of adding a new one at the bottom, you just select the lag that you would like to augment or add the lag into, and you'll be able to do that down below, and it will land So, you know, the whole point of this project is to make sure that um, the peering on call no longer had to observe the peering mailbox as closely as before. So what do we do if you write to peering at facebook.com? Well, we've set up a service which takes everything in that inbox, categorizes it automatically based on the content into peering requests, caching requests, various other categories. And then for everything to start being a peering request, we reply back automatically with the following message here, you know, thank you for your interest in peering. Please send us any peering requests on our dedicated page at facebook.com slash peering. So, it redirects you back to the page we set up, which saves us some time because we no longer have to carefully reply to every email, and hopefully it also saves you some time because you no longer have to wait for us uh, to set up these things. You can just request it yourself. So, a little more about what actually happens to your request after you've submitted it. So, as you can see at the top, there are a couple of different ways to get to the peering form on facebook.com slash peering. You can write to peeringdb, so sorry, peering at fb.com and be redirected. You can go straight to the page and do the peering to the OR. Or if you have network partner portals with us, you can also do it there. Regardless, once you submit the peering form, your request will land in our queue. This is just an internal uh, list of all of the requests that we've gotten. We set it up to make sure that our automation is what you expect. We're not deleting sessions, it's and so once something lands in the queue, we'll offer with another automated service we made, 
E quando um, chegamos a ele, o professor vai... Trazemos uma sugestão de aprovação que também está automatizada. O que, é que, é que você like pensa? O que deve ser feito para essa solicitação? Devemos aprovar, rejeitar, colocar uma bandeira como alerta. Então, segundo a catalogação de serviço, nós vamos fazer uma... Vamos tomar uma decisão, talvez, com uma pessoa realmente com uma automated communication. You know, if you're with us Bom, depois vai haver uma comunicação com os e vocês receberão uma comunicação automática. Nós vão receber um e-mail dizendo que nós concluímos a sessão, pedindo que vocês configurem a sessão também do seu lado. E vocês vão ver as sessões seguintes e vão ver que tudo isso funciona automaticamente. Tudo isso nos permitiu tirar muito do trabalho manual e automatizar as tarefas, fazendo com que o nosso trabalho fosse mais interessante e tivesse mais impacto. E assim nós vamos fazer isso. e tem tudo isso que deu lugar a 22 mil sessões que foram autoconfiguradas. Eu não sei como é que nós economizamos, não só nós, mas vocês também têm as suas operações manuais. Isso permitiu que nós façamos muito mais interessante, que nós pudéssemos fazer um trabalho mais interessante. Então, houve algumas considerações que nós tivemos antes de nós fazermos isso. First off, like I said before, we wanted to make sure that there was a human. We didn't want to just configure sessions really nearly without a human looking at them. So to start off with, every request was reviewed by a human. Gradually, we moved into more automated approvals. This would be the case, let's say, where you come to us and you're requesting sessions at an exchange where you already have sessions. That could probably be auto -approved. Or, for example, you have route server traffic and you're requesting for sessions. Maybe that could be auto -approved. There are a couple of different cases, right? Second off, we're relying on HearingDB for the authentication. This is, again, so you don't have to use your Facebook account. Um, but it's just okay. Um, in the end, we decided, you know, we already rely on hearing the data for all of the tools that we use for our session automation. So adding an extra reliance was fine. And then finally, uh, we've heard in the past, you know, using your personal Facebook for business is not a great experience. So we wanted to be certain that you could get to the page without using your personal Facebook. There were a couple of components it's required uh, to just go over them in case you also would like to set up something like this. The different things that we need and you would need. Uh, first off, we need a tool to generate the config files per peer. Then you'll need some automation to push those config files onto the router. To make sure everything works, you need a system that will monitor the status of those PGP sessions. And then you'll also need some kind of workflow engine to coordinate all of the different steps in setting up here. That's the back-end side. On the front end, you'll also need some kind of landing page, maybe like facebook.com slash peers, um, where you, your peers can come to request the PGP sessions with you. So you should try this out too if you find yourself facing the similar um, hearing requests, scaling problems that we've had. You know, the advantages are you and your peers can see all of their PGP sessions in one place. Um, it's easy to configure new PGP sessions. Hopefully, everybody already has a hearing DB account. And setting up the hearing DB OAuth was actually quite easy. It took us about a day. There are great instructions on the Peering DB website. Um, it was pretty simple. Other people are also using the Peering DB all account, like IXP manager and Peering manager, so it can be working quite well. And finally, you know, automation saves time. It saves us time, but it also saves you time, since everything is self-service. Um, on that note, 
Wie läuft es hier, Papa? Und wie sehen Sie das in den Sternen? First off, wie läuft es hier, Papa? Und wie sehen Sie das in den Login, wie die Standard for Networking Requests. No. Everybody in the community, for the most part, has a PMDB. So rather than having to remember you know, 100 different passwords for your 100 different partners, if everybody just used this one, it would be easy for everyone. Second off, um, we'd love to see more of these stuff that we've made in similar and have open source tools. You know, a lot of this today, Peering Manager, Peering DB OAuth is open source. There's a set of Peering DB tools and improvements to those benefit the whole community. So it'd be great to see those. And then finally, we've been working with a couple other companies on establishing a programmatic API for Peering. So right now, right, a human still has to come to our page or to another page uh, to request peering. What if instead for larger scale requests, we could just let two computers talk to each other directly um, and have them do an API, request peering, configure peering, exchange messages about peering? That kind of thing. So we're working on this right now. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, please come talk to me afterwards. I'd love to chat with you about it. Um, we're looking for any and all interested parties. So over to you, Diego. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we see this is only the beginning. We have created this form to request private or public peering with us, but we want to continue doing things like this. Uh, we like our permission quite a bit. So the next thing we're doing is coming to your browser very soon is a, a, a similar form to request participation in the caching program that we have. Currently, we receive requests by email to the email account that's fpi.com. And we're going to follow the same process we did with public peering and private peering requests. We're going to move this to the same uh, website, the facebook.com slash peering, there will just be another button where you can request participation in the program. So if you didn't get it, that's the, that's the link. And now we're open for questions. Alguna pregunta, tenemos espacio para un par de preguntas para nuestros comentarios. Por ahí creo que viene Douglas Fisher. Preguntas en castellano, portugués, inglés. Hola, yo iba a hacer la pregunta en castellano, pero Tomás no le echa. Voy a hacer la pregunta en portugués. Primero, gostaría de hablar de reiterar la recomendación que ustedes hicieron que todos los ISPs usen el IDB como base de autenticación. É, isso vale para vale todos. todos. Tem, a gente tem, tem, tem bastante XPs aqui, aqui do LACREX e outros que estão, que formando, estão se formando. Deveria ser deveria quase, ser quase uma que uma condição impositiva. impositiva. É, é realmente muito realmente importante. importante. Mas, Mas a, a pergunta que eu faço é... é vocês falaram do sistema de automatização de PIN, de PIN ou, seja, ou seja, das sessões de BGP. E a gente e sabe, a gente que, sabe tem que tem uma outra dificuldade, que, que são é a cama, é a cama, preparar a camada física, física, preparar a camada 2, 3, a rede de enlace. Quando a gente fala, a gente de, fala de sessão, sessão BGP, BGP sobre, um, sobre um, uma rede uma multilateral, multilateral um PLA, um PLA é, a cam... isso está tudo, tá tudo pronto, mas se você tem PNAs, a camada física, a camada física tem que estar preparada. preparada. Como essas, Como duas, essas duas coisas, coisas se alinham, se alinham é, no, é, no, teu no, fluxo, no teu fluxo e complementarmente, e complementarmente sobre esse sobre sistema de automatização, de automatização a, o Facebook, a Facebook contribui, contribui com diversos, diversos códigos abertos. abertos. Alguma, alguma parte, parte desse, desse sistema, sistema de automatização, de automatização estaria, por exemplo, estaria, por exemplo disponível, disponível para que, que outras, outras empresas pudessem, pudessem adotar? adotar? Obrigado. 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 É, eu vou responder... É, Espanhol, ah, inglês, eu, vou mas... eu entendi perfeitamente, mas meu é um português é um pouco raro, raro não sei se a gente sabe, mas... Sabe, mas uh... Um... Uh, let me say that, yes, this is, this is correct, the, the, when there is a PNI to be established, then you have a physical part of it. Uh, right now, the automation, what it's doing is putting the request into our uh, queue to be reviewed and approved, and when it's approved, it just kicks off the same provisioning process that you would do for anything else. Internally creates a ticket for our provisioning team. Uh, actually, the PNI request also asks, depending on the situation, but you may ask that you provide the LOA uh, for us and fill in the demarcation so like all the, all the everything that is like a copy paste it's try to be taken care of 
side of the platform, and she's uh, fired uh, the ticket or internal provisioning system that will be a human requesting uh, a cross I mean, if, if all the um, data center providers had uh, a website or an API that would receive cross connect requests automatically, then that would be great. Right? But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then the other question, that one is for Jenny. That's okay? Yeah. And the other question was about if anything was open, uh, any other code is open to share it, uh, Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, unfortunately, none of the code is open source. There's a lot of open source tools. A lot of it relies on our custom infrastructure, but there's a lot of open source tools that can do the same thing. And the programmatic API that we are working on will be open source once it's been developed. Tomás Lynch, Tomás, eh, para la última Lynch, pregunta. Última pregunta es, my question is, do you present the system for us to request to you? How do you request to you? Or you do not request to you? That's a great question. Um, it, it, it's uh, the volume of our request right now is smaller than the amount of requests we have to receive. Uh, we do have some things automated, like for example, when we uh, are connected at NIEX, we do have a feature that we call it top up, which is run a, a command, and it will automatically send an email to every member that, imagine we have usually like two routers connected to NIEX, and only one has a session, and the other one is not configured. So that automatically detects those cases and sends an email to uh, the other one that does not have the, the second session configured, and tells them, okay, hey, this is information I have configured. It will also push the configuration on our side, and so that's a pretty nice feature. But other than that, like CNI requests, uh, we usually send manually, but we do have some tools internally uh, for PNIs that we already have. Uh, it's easy for us to trigger a request for, a, for an upgrade. So we'll also kick off like an email template and say like, hey, you were at capacity, you would like to add some more. Thank you. Yeah. Bueno, eh, vamos a tener una última pregunta. Esta dama ha venido a hacer una, a hacer una pregunta, así que... Buenos días, Giovanna Castro de Columbia. ¿Existe alguna herramienta que pueda ser utilizada por los peers para identificar el flujo de tráfico desde Facebook hacia la red, de, hacia la red particular de cada peer? O sea, la, la, la pregunta es si en lugar de, de querer pedir el peering, tú quieres ver el tráfico. No, nosotros tenemos peer en diferentes puntos de nuestra red, en diferentes países. Y me gustaría saber si hay alguna manera de poder identificar por dónde está el tráfico de downstream, por dónde está yendo hacia nuestra red. Es más cuando tenemos problemas para poder identificar los links. Um, I will answer the question. Can I answer in English? Puedo responderte en inglés. Así también entiende bien. Ella entiende bastante bien español. Ahí va. Eh, okay, I'll answer in English. So, if you already have sessions in Figure or PNI established, and you, and you come here, you will see the amount of traffic uh, per edge location, let's say, right? And in, in certain cases, if you have access to the network partner portal, that everyone that has a cache has access, and some of the partners that have PNI have access to, you can see a lot of information that is not within the scope of this presentation, but we share performance. Uh, information no, about the egress eh, points, there's a map, a eh, lot of data. Uh, but that's all behind the network partner aquí. portal. Eh, and the next thing we're going to be adding do, next, do, next year, at the end of this year, is trace route information from, from all the locations where we see the, the But that's only if you have a portal. Okay, thank you so much. Bueno, bueno, pues con bueno, estas preguntas cerramos pregunta este bloque de presentaciones. Bloque de presentaciones. Eh, un aplauso para nuestros presentadores. Para nuestros presentadores.